welcome to The Sound Bath with me, Angelina Kalahari, your host for the next hour. The Sound Bath's objective is to talk about and listen to music with particular emphasis on the human vocal instrument in an informative, educational and questioning manner. The Sound Bath programmes are recorded live, meaning not in a studio and therefore you will experience some ambient noises and echoey quality to the recordings. Please be so kind as to ignore those and instead enjoy the content of the programme. I'm thrilled to chat today to June Kinoshita via Skype and Catherine Hollinsworth in her home in Toronto. Some of our listeners might know these ladies better as Juno and Zena, the authors of the book On the Meaning of Adam Lambert which combines personal reflections on the career of singer Adam Lambert with analysis of the impact of reality television and social media on the formation of far-reaching and meaningful fan cyber communities. The topic is one which they continue to explore on their blog Juno and Zena's Salon. The name comes from their social media identities. And they also co-host a weekly radio show which frequently features independent musicians. June, who resides in the Boston area, is an award-winning journalist who was an editor at Scientific American and helped develop three public broadcasting service documentary series. She's also a co-founder and chief marketing officer of Social Life, which applies entertainment and social networking technologies to healthcare. And Catherine, a Toronto-based policy analyst, has worked closely with Canadian businesses and local and national government in sectors ranging from music and gaming to healthcare and energy. And she was an aide to a former Canadian finance minister. I'm talking to them today about their new venture, Fanatic.fm. Fanatic.fm co-founder Ian Kwan said that despite their extensive experience in public policy, marketing, public relations and journalism, what set them apart was their absolute passion for music and for promoting talent. They are true fanatics when it comes to music, he said, so they are a perfect fit for Fanatic.fm. Catherine joins Fanatic.fm as Chief Development Officer and June as Chief Strategic Officer. So today I'm in Toronto, or more specifically Oakville, and it's wonderful to be here. It's very hot, unlike London. So welcome to the sound bath. I have with me Catherine and June, and they're going to talk about their new venture, and it's called Fanatic FM. So can you please tell us about your latest venture? What exactly is Fanatic FM? First of all, Thank you for having us on your show, You're and welcome. welcome to Oakville. Oh, thank you. And I know you've been here for a little while with one of our mutual friends, mm -hmm. and I hope you do enjoy the heat while you have it. <laughs> I am. Yeah, we, we, we try to store it up for winter, but it doesn't quite work that way. Right. Uh, Fanatic.fm mm -hmm. is a music platform. Okay. This is where musicians can post uh, their music mm -hmm. and in mp3 format they put their music up and they register and they put information about themselves we also then have sponsors and the sponsors sponsor the music so that each time a particular artist that they're sponsoring a particular artist's music is played the artist is earning some revenue so it's paid okay. for play Right. In addition to that, because there are other sites that do pay for play, we have a charity component. And each time when, it, when a musician has selected a charity, a portion of the payment from the sponsor to the musician and to, sponsor, uh, to Fanatic FM is paid to the charity. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so, so it's a win, win, win. Yeah. And the listener listens for free. That's fantastic. Yes, yes. So okay, it's a, so can I just yes. ask you, so that means the musicians aren't actually paying anything to no, go No, they're on, not. So that's free for them. Yes, it is. Right, okay. And then the spot, they 
are able to find sponsors or sponsors find the music that they want right and incorporate it into a marketing plan and That's pay nice. for the use of the music and in the meantime listeners are listening and receiving some messages from the sponsors yeah. and raising money for the charities yeah. as well that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. What a cool idea. So I'm going to ask June, what attracted you to Fanatic FM? Well, I actually stumbled across this company at a recent conference called Rethinking Music, which right. was organized by the Harvard Business School and the Berkeley School of Music in Boston. Right. And uh, as part of this conference, they had put out a call for business plans for new uh, new models for the music industry mm -hmm. and uh, fanatic.fm was one of three finalists from hundreds of companies that had submitted plans from around the world and I was at this conference and I heard this presentation and I just thought it made perfect sense uh, as as Kath said you know it's a win-win-win it creates this kind of ecosystem of goodwill and of value that is uh, appropriately targeted to the right, you know, the right fans, the right musicians, the sponsors. It just made a lot of sense, and it, it's a simple model, I th you know, and it's a story that I thought would be great to um, get out. So I actually yeah. contacted the uh, CEO and founder of Fanatic.fm. Right. And he is in Seoul, Korea. The company and oh. the development team are there. They're incorporated in California. And uh, I said, you know, we've been thinking a lot about the music industry. And uh, we have been immersed in fan culture and how fans are increasingly supporting the artists they love. And mm -hmm. this just seemed like a, a beautifully designed platform to um, empower fans, empower musicians, uh, give something of value to sponsors, and of course help charities. So mm. I somehow convinced him that we would be a great asset to his team, <laughs> that we could help sell this to the fan communities, yeah. build the musician community, and, um, and bring sponsors on board. Yeah. So here we are. <laughs> it's fantastic, it's an amazing idea. June, you know, let me in on what, what she was thinking yeah. and said, Kath, what do you think of this? Yeah. And I thought, what? <laughs> I don't quite get it. Right. And, and I had to let it sink in. Yeah. And I said, what have we got to lose? Yes, yes. let's let's put in a proposal. Yeah. And then I, di I didn't know what to expect. But June and I are supportive of each other that way. We, mm -hmm. we really don't know how to say no if uh -huh. one of us comes up with, a, with an idea. The other one generally says, Oh, that sounds like fun. Let's do it. So here we are. Yes. And as you say, what have you got to lose? It sounds a win-win-win exactly. win type it situation. Is. It is. I like the fact that the fans have so much input. That sounds amazing yes. to me as well. So why did you become so interested in the music industry in the first place then? Well, as fans. You're right. As fans. And June and I met online uh, blogging about Adam Lambert. Right. And we, we became huge fans of his mm -hmm. so much so that we published a book and we have a a very busy uh salon or yeah. blog mm -hmm. um we also we tweet uh, right. as well and we have you know three twitter identities and our blog and we write uh blog posts etc but what we discovered along the way mm -hmm. were these other artists that adam would promote and right. he would tweet about them or we got to know his band members right. and then we got to know that they had uh they were singer songwriters or yeah. or performed uh, with other uh, musicians yeah and we became more and more intrigued particularly because we had a, a radio show which i forgot to mention so mm -hmm. we have also a radio show and we began to introduce new musicians to our audience for the radio show right and we became more and more interested in presenting new music, giving new artists an opportunity to be introduced to a worldwide audience because our, our radio show is online and it's heard around the world. Yeah. And really caring about them. We got to know them. We'd go see them. Yeah. And we had this concept mm -hmm. of doing something on our own that would be about 
new music, uh, you know, unsigned musicians. Right. And and then this. Fortunately, this came along. Yeah. And it was serendipitous. I don't think I'm revealing anything to anybody to say. You know, the music industry is going through a historic upheaval. Right. And Angelina knows. I know you both know. I'm married to musicians, so mm -hmm. I've been thinking about these things just from a personal standpoint, but uh, mm. but kind of at an arm's distance. That was his business. Uh, but when we became very interested in Adam Lambert, we really were looking at many aspects of his career. So his fans are tremendously devoted to him and protective of him. And we saw a huge amount of anxiety, um, anger towards his record company or his management over perceived uh, I don't know, lack of support or marketing approaches that fans didn't understand or agree with. And, right. and that just drew us into thinking more about, well, how is music marketed? How are artists developed these days? And we, right. you know, what we discovered was that the existing system is really um, stacked against young and, you know, emerging artists. Yes. They have about a six-month window if they grab the attention of a, a label they have a very short time in which to become a mega hit. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a whole new machinery behind it. It involves these producers and this promotion engine and the radio stations. And uh, and we felt it was it was really not serving anyone except perhaps the label CEOs. Right. I mean, it, yeah. it's not serving the fans. They're not getting a, exactly. the wide range of music. Certainly not serving the artists. And so we care deeply about this because this is such an important part of our culture. People feel so strongly about music. So I, I just think time for new models and mm -hmm. nobody knows what's going on. So right. why not? <laughs> why yeah. not us? Well, right. And I don't want to undersell ourselves. Okay. So we, we don't have, we don't come with preconceived ideas about the music industry because we've yeah. never yeah. been in the industry, but we do bring a lot of skills. Mm -hmm. I mean, Kath is a policy analyst and she has been in, in, marketing and right. uh, public relations and government and I'm a writer I've been in writing and publishing and web publishing and I founded several companies yes and um, and I felt that you know what we what we care about is high quality product we yes. understand how to develop relationships I just wanted to add something about right. our credentials one of the aspects of our background right. that was appealing to the founders right. was that we didn't come with any direct music business experience. Right. We had a whole bunch of other skills yes. and abilities that we brought, as June explained, yes. but we weren't insiders and we were coming from a different perspective right. and they found that very appealing. I can imagine and also as you said earlier because you, you saw the fan base mm -hmm. and what that is like from an insider's point of view almost so that gives you that yes. handle on things too yes. doesn't it so can I ask you um, how is fanatic.fm different so so how is fanatic.fm different from other uh, I guess other music sharing platforms yes. well, I think a very important difference with many of them is uh, while the music it can be played for free and I think you know, that's an expectation now that consumers have that they should be able to sample music for free. The artist gets paid. That's a big difference. In, in many cases, artists feel they have to put their music out there and they don't get any kind of compensation for that. Yeah. And uh, also in the cases where there's some kind of revenue, some sort of uh, royalty or advertising revenue, right. uh, I believe that Fanatic.fm's formula is actually much more advantageous. The pay per play rate is, I think, going to, on average, turn out to be quite a bit higher, at least based on our calculations, right. than they would get yeah. through Rhapsody yeah. or Last FM or Spotify or, you know, any of those platforms. And right. the other very important difference is, of course, the, the charity component. That is required. Musicians have to... Um, designated charity. It's a small part of the revenue they get, but nonetheless, we felt that it's really important to include that component, that we want to do good as well as, you know, we want to do good not only for musicians, but also for many socially uh, important causes. So those are, those are important differences. I love that. I love the fact that it's holistic. 
It goes really? round. It's yes. like a circle. I yes. love that. I really like that a lot. Okay, so now let's have a, a little bit of a talk about <laughs> the actual music. Oh, well, which is why we're here, isn't yeah, it? Right. That, that's why we're exactly, doing it. Exactly, exactly. We have up and running close to, or I think about 90 uh, different wow. musicians. Okay. In a huge range of of different types of music, some of which we had never even heard of before, okay. uh, because they are global. The musicians come from all parts of the world and represent, in some cases, updated folk music right. from their own uh, ethnic group, right. wh which is really exciting because yeah. usually that music is localized and it's only played within the, their own country. Right. But with Fanatic.fm, it's now available worldwide. Yes. And, and I find that very exciting. Mm. I tend to get in inside and I play a few and, the, and, and some of the mus musicians just capture my attention. I find myself playing their music over and over and over right. again. And what gets me, and I think that this uh, probably applies to a lot of listeners mm -hmm. is the kind of feeling that a particular piece of music or body of music engenders in me. Right. So I tend to write about how I feel about an artist's okay. music. And I also get in the case, because I live in Toronto and in June's case, uh, living in Boston, we even get to see some of the musicians because they play locally. Yeah, that's fantastic. Which is really exciting. And we have them on our show to talk about, but probably one of the assets for Fanatic.fm is the range. And I haven't seen that kind of range anywhere else. Right. I mean, we have Romanian gypsy music. That's wonderful. Yes, it, it is. Wow. It, it is amazing. It's yeah. actually club dance music, the way right. it's been presented. And yeah. It's, I mean, it really got me because that's yeah. a bit of my uh, music background ethnically. So, it, but we also have, you know, folk musicians and heavy duty classic rock and a whole range. June also ta writes about, I mean, we, we blog about the musicians and right. the music. That's fantastic. Well, we'll, we'll put your blog details yes. on, on the oh, website so that people be great. can find you and, and read what you've mm -hmm. written because <laughs> it sounds wonderful. I would love to mention a few of the musicians yes. that I've just been uh, very excited about. So even though we're just starting and we have, you know, I mean, we're very happy with the number of musicians who have signed up. But yeah, it's still fantastic. a small number, but even amongst mm -hmm. those, there's some really outstanding oh. artists. One that comes to mind is Helen a Dove Hawk, okay. who I believe is an English singer, I think probably of some maybe you know, Afro-Caribbean oh. background is my guess. Okay. Yes, yeah, she's very um, exotic. And she styles herself as kind of a, sham a shamaness. <laughs> right. <laughs> and she Wonderful. has this amazing voice that is both very free and emotional and also very disciplined at the same time. It's very hard to get that right, you know, right. <laughs> as yeah. a singer, I think you know, you can yeah. be so disciplined but don't have that freedom, freedom. or you can be free but like kind of out of control. And she is, you know, right in that sweet spot and um, Kath described her as kind of a bit of Shirley Bassey and, and Nina Simone. I mean, she's mm -hmm. that good. She wow. ends, but with a really unique, uh, she writes her own music and it's very powerful, it's, it's fantastic stuff. And I had right. that looping for quite a while. <laughs> yeah. so the Essence by Helen Above Hawk. Lord above, sink below, swim the rivers as they flow. Tasty essence, tasty earth, taste the sun of all its words. Taste the sun of all its words. Thank you. 
Monty Pittman with Colors Wash Away from his album The Deepest Dark. Life 
Life is like a setting sun One goes and then comes another one If I don't see you again tonight Well, you should know that I'm alright Another told that I've got more to say The river flows, colors wash away But I won't forget Your This is Xander Smith's band, Run Run Run, with 10,000 from their album, Run Run Run. I'm throwing it all away, I turn it on everyone. Going out on a plane It's headed up for the sun Watching the world sink fast below me It takes one Long wave goodbye Watching the world at 10,000 feet I see love Just pass me by Love, 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 love I don't believe in love Love, 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 love I won't believe in love Jack and Jim 
is no goal to reach by Americans. Well, it is. Yeah. yeah. One of the things that 
where do we, what radio station do we listen to? Uh, where where are we going to follow? The, you know, top 40, I, yeah. I refer to the dozen acts. <laughs> and if you listen to top 40, you can, you know, change buttons. You're still going to listen to the same, hear the same songs over and right. over. People must be curious and say, well, there must be a lot more music produced. And there is, yes. as we know. But if it doesn't fit a particular genre or particularly what, you know, I'm sure that a lot of the record companies are out there looking for another Bieber, another Ex Rihanna. Yeah. But that's not what our artists are about. They are unique. Mm. And this is where you'll find, for instance, I will, I'm going to name a couple, thanks to June's inspiration. One of them is Daryl Strode's, and he's going to actually going to be on a radio show. His music is a soul R&B romantic. Oh, wow. Oh, it's just, it is very powerful nice. romantically. And that's not what we hear on the radio. We're not hearing those ballads yeah. uh, that you can find on fanatic.fm. This is I Still Want You by Daryl Strodes. Let me take the time and see how you do. Hope you're doing fine. Hey, sorry it went the way it did, but who knew? Sorry we blew it through. It wasn't my plan for you. And if you weren't so pure, I wasn't sure what to give or if you want it anymore. No. So I decided to invite you to this little rendezvous. Just for me and you So when I call you, oh, baby, no. ask I need to know where we stand uh, Even though I walk I never even oh, talk to no. home See, I still want to love you Even though I might not deserve you But I still want you Magnets. Okay. And they, their, their, um, 
unique sound is similar to, say, Simon and Garfunkel. So okay. they have, and all of the harmony, you know, harmony musicians, uh, Beach Boys and the various that uh, came before. Right. The ones whose voices just go together so beautifully. Yes. Sometimes they sound like one voice. This is Perfect Remedy by Fridge Magnets. Secret Lend an ear It's best that you believe it for yourself Can't you hear When your feet start tapping You don't even notice Until it's pointed out by someone else Comes from out of nowhere Some familiar song When you hear the music You can't help but sing along Sing along Did you ever sing a song And feel much better? Was music your perfect remedy? Did a song on the radio dial Never make you smile Lose yourself in a memory First feel the beat Then you move your feet You already know all the words You made me clap hands And you remember the name of the band And you lose yourself in a memory in music, the perfect remedy. Toronto and I was able to go see them right. and that actually you know that that's a lot of fun yeah. when when we get to go when we get to meet them as we have met Monty that June talked about yes. so for us as fans yeah <laughs> this is huge I mean, this is fantastic. this is great and we yeah. we do, we are inspired by the music to do what we do yeah 
I love it. Yeah, it comes I love the, the fact that fans are taking things into their own <laughs> <Yeah>. hands. <laughs> I think that's amazing and wonderful. Okay, so I just wanted to ask you because mm -hmm. I'm a little bit unclear. If I was a musician and I want to sign up to this, mm -hmm. how would I do it? It's very simple. In the top right hand corner of fanatic.fm right. website, uh, there's a little link that says sign up. And when you go to that link, it asks you to pick a button. What type of person are you? Are you a sponsor, a musician, a charity? Uh, we also have uh, bloggers can join and, and help right. yes. And so if you're a musician, you click on musician and then it asks you for information. It takes you through a, a registration form. You know, you have to um, set a release date. You have to just have a little text that describes your uh, music and your particular project. Possible, you should have a website or MySpace page or Facebook that you can direct people to because right. mm -hmm. we want people to buy your music after they listen to it. Our premise is get paid, get, get some compensation while people are listening to your music for free. So while you're promoting it, get some compensation, but ultimately you want people to fall in love with your music and go to your website and go to your iTunes account and buy it. So you've oh, got to yes. put in your links and uh, you need to upload some photographs of your band, yourself, you know, maybe album cover right. images. And, and I think that's important for, for fans to kind of yeah. connect with you as an artist. The photos have to be of some specific size, so that's the only tricky thing. If you have the wrong size, you can't upload them. So we'll we'll try to make that easier. But right. that, and then you upload your MP3s, and basically that's yep. it. So oh, it's easy. Sounds, yeah, it's kind of easy as setting up a Facebook account. Okay. Well, and one of the advantages again of of Fanatic.fm is that the musician and the fans mm -hmm. and the spot everybody ends up with a little player you have this little player that can be copied and embedded right. anywhere oh. and the player is linked back right to fanatic.fm so let's say a musician has that little player mm -hmm. embedded on their facebook fans play it on their facebook page they then still get the sponsor fee they right. still re receive the sponsor fee oh. for that so this is this is this yes. portable uh, revenue generator right. for them, but it and it is a great way to, yes. uh, as June says, to introduce the music to, especially so many unsigned artists. People stumble on them and they need to hear them a few yes. times before they they go. They oh, all right, you know. Yeah, I, I, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So I think that the portability of the, yeah. of the player is really important. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. I think I might have to <laughs> sign up myself. <laughs> Um, so that, that takes us into, as you were saying, about mm -hmm. the charities and the sponsors yes. and everybody talking together. Let's have a, a, a little bit more about the charities then. How does that work? I don't know if June would like to start yes. with that. Uh, so once an artist uh, has a sponsored campaign going, they can uh, select a charity that they want to direct the, the donation towards. Right. And we have uh, approached a number of charities that already have a strong interest in music uh, because we, you know, we want to build a, as you say, this community, this ecosystem. Right. And we think it would be helpful to have those charities already there and then um, the artists can see them and be motivated to, to direct donations towards those charities. So we have... Uh, currently, we have uh, Oxfam Ireland, we have a Cambodian project to benefit school children and, and projects in Cambodia. And then recently, we added two um, that are, we're excited about. One is uh, Little Kids Rock, which is a growing national organization that funds music in public schools. So they purchase instruments wow. for children in underserved schools and they pay for uh, music instruction. And they have teamed up with a real A-list oh. of musicians um, like Carlos Santana and um, wow. Jonas That's... Brothers and uh, I mean Slash and one after yeah. the other and also Monty Pittman who is a, an honorary member of their board. Right. And so we, you know, so that to us is a, a natural marriage. I mean, every artist, if they wanted, if they directed 
funding towards Little Kids Rock. I talk about, you know, paying forward. Yeah. <laughs> what if someone did for you to make you, uh, to help you learn your art, help the next generation. And we also have another charity that just joined us, I think, yesterday, right? Um, yes. Which is Wells Bring Hope. And that is a clean water uh, in Africa oh, yeah. uh, charity. They, they dig wells to provide safe drinking water in the villages so that uh, children and you know, people don't get sick. And also, very importantly, uh, a lot of the labor, the, the backbreaking labor of carrying water from mm. a distant, often yes. filthy watering hole to the village can consume hours out of the day. And it's usually women and, and young girls and children who are doing this work. Right. And it's keeping them from getting education. It's keeping them from getting work. Uh, right. Other, you know, paying work. So, um, so water, uh, providing clean water for these communities is is really transformative. And if, just think about the effect that clean water had in our societies. I mean, that yeah. is that was big public health mm -hmm. revolution in the West, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, so that's a great charity that has also recently signed up to Fanatic FM. Wonderful. I, I want to add something that I think is important. If charities are listening or, mm -hmm. or someone who who would like to recommend fanatic.fm for a charity. Mm -hmm. We are very cognizant of the fact that charities need to spend the, the least amount of time and effort to maximize the return. Right. And if, if a project requires a lot of babysitting and, and maintenance and keep up, Sometimes it's just not worth it. They're not yeah. going to get the return. Exactly. So in the case of Fanatic.fm sponsorship, it is set it up, off it goes. Right. It's, and it's not that complicated to yeah. set up. So that, I think, is really important for sponsors to yeah. know. That it, this isn't one of those very uh, difficult appl you know, yeah. application processes or yeah. anything like that. That's yeah. a fantastic idea. It really, really is. Okay, so as, as we're talking about all the people that's <laughs> surrounding you, how about the sponsors? How do yes. you find them? <laughs> <laughs> well, we are fortunate in that we already have some uh, sponsors, and Samsung is one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Teddy Bears Museum is another one. Right. And June, actually June and I are now really embarking on looking for sponsors uh, right. for our musicians. And there are particular types of business, mm -hmm. uh, or brands actually, it's brands that use uh, music and video and social media yeah. uh, as part of their marketing. Right. And this is where we fit in, mm -hmm. is in their social media uh, marketing department. And that is where we're, we're looking for brands that are used by or appeal to the demographics. Now, given the range of music that we have, I was gonna say. yeah, the, uh, the, the demographics are very broad. Yeah, you know, we we've got the club music mm -hmm. uh, for the the dance club generation. Right. Uh, but we have for younger people, we have for older people, and again. This is a global reach. Right. So the brands that we attract, the type of brands, tend to be international in scope. Right. And, um, inter you know, interested in that global reach through, yeah. not just through the music, music but through the fans, uh, you know, through the fans of the, yeah. of the music itself. Sounds amazing, I have to say. And this is where our previous corporate experience is really helpful. Of course. We, we you know, we have that kind of yes. uh, business background which people who come from a music background mm -hmm. may not have. So I'm assuming this has changed your life. It's taken over your life. But how has it changed things for you? I guess the most immediate way that it's changed my life is I'm, I'm having a blast. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I, you know, the first stage of having a blast was getting, uh, becoming an Adam Lambert Uber fan. Right. <laughs> And that's been great, and it continues to be massively fun. But this is just as fun, and but it has that added element of being very rewarding because mm -hmm. we're also helping. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the opportunity to help so many other artists 
Right. You really need it. They don't have the American Idol platform. They're incredibly talented, and the yeah. world needs to hear their music. And at the same time, we're benefiting these charities, and we're bringing on some, you know, I hope in a few weeks or a month or so, I would love to be able to announce a really major charity that, that we're in discussion with. Uh, you know, that's just deeply gratifying. I mean, it's, it's doing good, doing good work, and at the same time, you know, now, you know, when I go to concerts, I've been, I've been getting out more. I've been going to more concerts. <laughs> I saw Anita Costa a couple weeks yeah. ago. I saw Sia and Oland the other night. I mean, um, I've been going with my younger daughter to, like, uh, warp Tour, kind of real alt-rock, screamer <laughs> rock. Wow, okay. <laughs> it's so much fun. So uh, now I go with a real sense of purpose as well. It's something I could do. Right. For, for the bands that I that are playing and you know, going around uh, yeah. living in the backs of their vans. So. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, you know, speaking of backs of vans, my daughter is a photographer and right. she she photographs bands right. uh, on stage. So we've had a, a kind of a relationship with various of these bands. Right. And as they, t this is one of the thing uh, ways that we learned about the music business was right. directly from the musicians right because they come through toronto right and they barely earn enough in a night to buy dinner yes and they need you know they need a hotel room they need a shower they need yeah. they need a, you know a number yeah. of things but they can't afford it so they are literally living in the van right and alex said, you know, can the band come and stay at our house? So we did it once, and, they, and we really enjoyed it. Yes. <laughs> so we've had a number of bands come through here. That's fantastic. And, and that yeah. gives us this really uh, personal connection. Right. So that even if I don't know, you know, I don't know the band per se, yeah. I know what they're, I know who they are. Right. Yeah. Um, by the by, the uh, band members that have come through here, and now I get a chance to put essentially to put my money where my mouth is because right. I actually have the opportunity to do something for those bands, right? And you know, help them get a hotel room. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's you so know, help wonderful. Them earn enough yeah. money to to, to yeah. uh, be able to do a tour. Yeah, because a, a tour is an expensive proposition it is, for them. It exactly, and they don't have yes. a label behind them, as you no, said. Yeah, no. Oh, that's wonderful! I love the fact that they come to stay with yeah. you. <laughs> that's so cute. <laughs> I'm sure they really appreciate. Oh, we it have as fun. Well. We yeah. have fun. I think what you're doing is fantastic. I want to commend you. Thank you very much, ladies. That was wonderful. I'm going to ask you to do your promotional bit now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a number of uh, social media outlets. Right. Uh, let's begin with the website itself, which mm -hmm. is fanatic.fm, mm -hmm. and information for musicians, for brands, for sponsors, and for fans is available on the website. Right. And that is being built, refined, updated constantly. Right. And new musicians are being added on. It, June talked about a new charity just yesterday. Yes. So that's one place. Right. Uh, we also have a new blog <laughs> because one blog isn't enough. Of so we have not. a we have a second blog, right. and it's called the Fanatic. Okay. And it is on WordPress.com. So right. it is June. Correct me if I'm wrong. The Fanatic dot WordPress dot com. No, it's a uh, Fanatic FM. Oh yes. Dot WordPress dot com. com. Yes. Okay. So. It, for the blog, there's no, so no dot before the fanatic. It's just one string. Fanatic FM. Dot WordPress. Dot com. com. And uh, we have we have a Twitter, uh, mm -hmm. which is at Fanatic FM. Right. We have a lot of followers, and it's a very interesting group that we have right. on on that uh, Twitter because it is people in the music industry. It's musicians, primarily. It's, right. it's a lot of, you know, business related. However, we also have fans on there right. and that's where we can, uh, we, you'll get postings of our newest musicians. You know, we put that up quickly by Twitter, which is great. Right. We also have a Facebook page. And of course our Twitter and Facebook oh, yes. links are on the blog. There. Right. Yes. So 
Yes. You can find and them pretty much at the blog. The blog is being we're we're getting to the point where we're we will be posting something every single day right and sometimes two things well, we are encouraging subscribers so we would like people to subscribe to fanatic fm and get our news instantly regularly right. by email and that is free that yes, subscription it, everything is free okay yes right. it is free yes. yes and it's just an easy subscription it does not ask invasive questions right. it's yes. it's very simple yeah and oh, people can post comments there okay yes this oh, is an interactive good. blog in that way right. is that people can post uh comments to our stories well mm -hmm. thank you so much that was most interesting thank you and i'm sure you're going to be inundated with british fans and british oh, musicians and we would love people. that we yeah. would love that yeah. and all genre I haven't seen anybody in the classical. Yeah. We would love to have some classical yeah. music on there because That's wonderful. there are all kinds of brands and they are looking for a whole range of different types of music. Yeah. And classical is, what I love about classical is it never goes out of style. That's right. It's been around <laughs> yes. for a while. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you very, very much. It's wonderful to have met you both. Thank you, yes. Thank you so much for having us on your show. Yes. You're very welcome. Thank you. And, um, I it's been say, so much fun. Yes, <laughs> it has. And I shall say goodbye to, from sunny Toronto. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>